Uh, my name is Lindsay Patrick and I'm a K-6 special education teacher at Flat Gap Elementary in Johnson County. This summer I was honored to be accepted into the Summer Institute for the Modern Classroom Project where I got to learn some very valuable information about the components of a blended classroom and how that could work for me as a special education teacher. So the problem of practice that I found is as a K-6 special education teacher in the spring and even before COVID, I was mainly a resource teacher. I would pull students to my classroom to provide supplemental reading and math instruction. Well, for some of our grades, especially my group of second graders last year, I had eight students that I would have to pull at the same time. And within those eight students, some of them were still working on letter sound identification, whereas others, their goal was fluency on a first grade level. And so where I only had them in here for those 45 minutes, I always felt like I was struggling with meeting all of their different learning needs and making sure I was addressing their individual goals and meeting their individual learning styles with all within that 45 minutes. So, um, I just really wanted to find ways that I could make every second count with those students so that I didn't feel like I was ever ending a time period in here and, and I didn't get to work with this student as much as I felt that they needed. I really wanted a way that I could target my instruction to meet all of their needs and effectively utilize every second that they were with me. And two, as I do work with students with special needs, I really, I'm always looking for ways to promote self-advocacy with them, ways that they can take control of their learning and they can make known their needs. So this led me to the Modern Classroom Project. And just like this graphic details, the Modern Classroom Project, it's a, a mix of blended instruction where students can create different instructional videos that are on varying contents, varying levels. The structure is self-paced. Students can learn at their own pace within each unit of study. So it's not a race to see who can get this worksheet finished and turned in because that might not even be something that you're working on. Your classmate may be working on that and you're working on something totally different, but you're, you're still learning the same content, but you're just moving at a different pace. And mastery-based grading. So when students show that they have mastery of a lesson or a component, then they get to move on to the next. Before I discuss the different components of the modern classroom, I do want to go ahead and state that at this time, I've not utilized this in my classroom because as I said, when I went into this program, I had in mind a specific group of students and that's kind of what I structured my whole lesson around was these students, these second graders going into third grade. But then when the school year started, instead of servicing those students in a resource setting, I'm actually now mostly with primary students and spending the majority of my day collaborating in a kindergarten classroom and working with some of our students with special needs in there. And I really enjoy it, but with kindergartners, they weren't quite ready to do blended learning. We are just now getting proficient with logging on, just logging on to the computer. So this is a unit though that I do feel like I'll be able to use with my students after Christmas once they have some more proficiency with the computers and they're able to use them more independently. So back to the Modern Classroom Project, the first component is to design your mastery checks. And really and truly as educators, this, this is how we design a lot of our instruction anyway. You begin with the end in mind. You think about, what our standards say and what our students need to know and then we work backwards from there. How, how can we help them know this? What do we want them to know at the end of each lesson? What's the most important skill or piece of knowledge that they need to come away with? And then how will we measure their understanding? And as this is blended learning, we know that we don't just want students sitting here going through modules on the computer and never interacting with us. 
we've still got to find ways to work with small groups of students. So incorporate those opportunities for one-on-one -on -one conferencing with students. And as a result of that, you're probably gonna need to provide some opportunities for revision. Let students, if there's something they're struggling with, once you've met with them, you've figured it out, let them try some more and, and let them revise. This is one of the mastery checks that I created in my unit. So the standard that I was focusing on was to associate the long and short vowel sounds. So my learning target for this particular lesson was that students would be able to distinguish between words that include a short I vowel sound and words that do not. And so this is a screenshot of just a simple jam board that I created. And my goal for this was just simply to see if they could recognize that short I sound. This was the assessment, the mastery check that went with my first lesson. And that's really all we talked about in the first lesson. Introducing short I, writing short I, determining words that start with that sound, hearing it. That's, that's what I wanted to make sure is, can you recognize the short I sound? So all they would have to do is drag these circles over to the pictures that include the short I sound somewhere. Now, once they took that assessment, if I saw, okay, they seemed to miss, struggled with finding short I in a medial position. I would, that's where I would pull them for some one-on-one -on -one conferencing, work with them on that. And then after they've practiced some more, I would have a different assessment. And this one would be simply them trying to find short I, words that have short I in the medial position. Same over here, maybe they just struggled with it in the initial location as an initial sound. Again, conferencing, additional practice, and then let them try this assessment to see if they are able to now recognize the short I as an initial sound. The next component is blended learning. And so this just involves creating an instructional video for each lesson. And I'm gonna show you a clip of mine here in just a minute. Videos, this is very important. I feel one of the key components to this, especially the younger the learners that you're working with. Videos should be concise, no more than five minutes and engaging. So where I did create my videos with primary students in mind, I tried to keep them under five minutes. I think most of them are around the four minute mark. And instead of reading off a PowerPoint like I am in this presentation, I tried to have several small segments within that. So um, like I know in the first video, we're listening for the short I sound. We're brainstorming words that start with the short I sound. Then we're using our notes to practice writing short I. So within that five minute video, there's several different activities they're doing. So it's not like they're just sitting and listening to the same thing for five minutes. Also, just like in this PowerPoint, it's important to make sure there's a video because if your kids are going to be working self-paced online, you want them to still get to see you. It helps for them to see your face, hear your voice, see your expressions. So make sure when you're making these videos to include your video as well. And they also suggest to provide students with guided notes. That way they can focus on the video and it holds them accountable. Now again, I created this with primary students in mind. So my guided notes aren't like long lecture notes. For this first video, I provided them with a handout. We use um, the Orton Gillingham phonics model at my school. And so I provided them with the printout of an I on the house paper, and we pract they had to practice with their green crayon, tracing the I in the house paper and making that sound. And so that was their guided notes for the first video. So it doesn't have to be actual writing paragraphs of notes. You can, you can make it work based on your age level and the ability level. Component three is the self-paced structure. This is obviously the meat of the Modern Classroom Project because this is where everything comes together and you design your unit. 
you determine how you'll structure your daily lessons within your unit. Again, just like what you do in the classroom anyway, when you're designing a unit and you determine what you're gonna be doing on this day or this lesson, except in this case, you have it all ready and all on an online format so that your students can work through it at their own pace. And I know as a homeroom teacher, I used to teach third grade math and that was such a struggle for me because I would have some lessons that I needed to teach and I would have my higher students breeze right through it and they would be ready for something else. And then I would have other students that really needed extra time with that. And it was so hard to structure it so that you weren't holding anybody back or slowing them down, but not moving ahead and leaving anybody behind. And I think this is where this modern classroom project would come into play as such a beautiful resource. Is you can give those students that need extra practice and extra time plenty of those opportunities. Whereas your students that need to move on ahead or need challenges, you can do that too. So within the self-paced structure, you have different activities that you classify as must do, should do, and can do. So just like those names suggest, the must do's are the essential components of the lesson. Like they must watch the instructional video. They have to do the notes. They have to do the mastery check. The should do's are quality opportunities for practice that they should be able to complete, but if something happens and we, they need to move on to the next lesson or they don't get to those, it's not a big deal. And the can do's are extra practice activities or activities great for those early finishers or students who need that extra practice. You also need a system to track and monitor student progress. Um, it's really important for the students to be able to see where they are within the unit or what they still need to do. And then also quality opportunities for collaboration. And I'm gonna show each of those things within my unit on the next few slides. So this is my lesson one, introduction to short I. And you can see it's set up kind of like a game board. This is the first activity that students must do, second, third, and then over here we've got some of the should do's and we end with the mastery check. So my must do for this is my video and my notes. So I'm gonna click on the video here. Like I said, I'm just going to play a little clip of it just so you can kind of get an idea. Um, some of the resources that they suggested using for videos, and I, I'd never used them before, but I really enjoyed them, were Screencastify and Edpuzzle. Hello, boys and girls. Today we are going to learn about a new letter sound. So the first thing I need you to do is turn on your listening ears. And I want you to listen while I read a sentence out loud. See if you can hear a repeated sound. So as you can see, my video is just, it's about four minutes and 45 seconds. I have my screen shared, but I also have the video of me so that my students aren't just hearing my voice, but they're seeing me as well. Also, within my game board here, where they would click on their guided notes. And so like I said, for my primary students, these are just some simple notes, like they would write, we would write the words that go with each of these pictures. And then there's the handwriting paper where they would practice writing short I and practice their short I sound. So again, these notes are very simple, something that my kindergartners could easily do but it's still keeping them to where they have to listen to the video, they have to pay attention, it helps them focus and keeps them accountable. Then another must do activity is an IXL lesson here that again reinforces the short I sound. There's a practice page. And then right here is where I've incorporated some opportunities for collaboration, a picture sort with a friend. They have to sort pictures based on the short vowel sound they hear. And then lastly is the mastery check like I showed you. Now each, so this is lesson one. 
I've completed the same format for four lessons within this unit. Again, this was lesson two, read and write short I words. There's the video, the notes, the must do practice, and opportunities for collaboration. A game with a friend, um, here's a game they could play by themselves, and a mastery check. So each of my lessons, I made sure there were the videos and notes, good quality practice activities, opportunities to collaborate with a classmate, and the mastery checks. So I, this particular unit, I did four lessons, and this is my student progress tracker. So you can see here, these are the unit assignments. And what I did is I just went through each of my lessons and I picked out those must do, the things that I really wanted the students to do. And so when they were finished, their name would show up over here in black underneath the assignments. If they had not done it yet, their name would show up white under the assignments. And if it was yellow, it would mean they needed to revise. Maybe I noticed that they were really struggling on that IXL lesson. Or when I looked at their practice page they had submitted, there were several errors on there. And so that would, when they would see their name in yellow, that would mean, okay, I need to go see Ms. Patrick and let's conference and let's get this worked out. So again, this is something that you would display for all of the students to see so that they would know where they're at within the unit. This little star is for shout outs for those students who are making really good progress or maybe they've gone above and beyond. Maybe, you know, so-and-so they, they made it to 80 on their IXL, let's give them a shout out. And then student teachers were students who maybe showed particular mastery on a certain assignment or lesson and their name would show up here as somebody that could help another student. And this is just the same thing, but for the, the last two lessons. And lastly, the last component is learning design. And all this is, is determining how you want your lessons, what online format do you want to use for your students to access the lessons. Using whatever learning management system your district already uses is really the easiest thing to do because your students are gonna be most familiar with that. We use Google Classroom in Johnson County. So my students are already very familiar with that. Um, I have my Google Classroom pulled up over here like a sample one of how I would present this. So I have my unit one short I, that's my topic in my Google Classroom. And then each one of these tabs is a different lesson. So when a student was working on lesson one, they would click on it and click on the link here and complete the different assignments and activities there. Same for two, three, and four. So to conclude, the Modern Classroom Project is a really, really great tool to provide each student with individualized targeted instruction to fill in those learning gaps. Also, as a special education teacher, I feel like it will be so helpful to let my students work at their own pace and take ownership of their learning. I do feel like the setup is geared more towards our older learners, just since they can take more responsibility, they're more independent, more proficient with technology, but I feel like it can definitely be adapted for primary students as well. When we come back from Christmas break, I would really like to start incorporating this in the kindergarten classrooms that I collaborate in, because I feel like by that point, they will definitely be ready for this. And I think that it will be a really great tool for them.